today we're going to be talking about blazer unit testing with components uh, and how we're going to do that is using B unit. So I'm really excited about this because I think it's a really cool library for testing blazer components. It's really the best one that I found out there. Not that there's a lot of them out there right now, but they're also adding a lot of cool new features as they go through. So it's split up into a number of packages. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But right now, these are just some of the basic things that you can do with BUnit. You can set up and define components under test using Razor. You can test using uh, semantic HTML comparisons, um, which basically says I can take out the spaces um, in between. But um, then, then we have interacting with in, in triggers and components and event handlers. So that's really cool. Um, we can pass parameters and how we define our components. We can basically call them the same way we call them in a Blazor app and test, uh, you can do snapshot tests. And then the other thing is, is we can mock the IJS runtime. We didn't do anything with this, but this is the interop that allows you to talk to uh, JavaScript. Um, and then also talk about uh, Blazor authentication and authorization, something we also didn't use. But um, so this is, this is just a real cool um, library there's more information out here at this uh, BUnit one, um, especially when you get into this documentation. I'm not going to go through it here, but it's really good. Um, it has everything you need, and uh, let's go through an example. All right, now that we've opened our solution, let's add a test project. So we're going to go up to File. We're going to go to New. We're going to go to Project. And we're going to search for XUnit. So I'm going to create a .NET Core XUnit project. I'm going to go to Next. And I want to create this in e source. And I'm going to put this outside of this Tour of Heroes folder. Let me double check how I've structured this thing. So if I have Tour of Heroes here, I can't put it in here because everything in here will be considered um, tour of heroes code so then my unit test would be showing up under here that causes chaos um, so I've kind of structured my code wrong so I'm just gonna dump it out here and we're just gonna reference it that way um, I would have to restructure the entire folder structure and I just don't want to do that for right now so I'm just gonna call this blazer test and I'm gonna dump it right in there and so we're gonna call this uh, tour of heroes test there's a right way to do this, and I'm just not going to spend the time to do it right now. So you can see this solution. We have our tour of heroes test. I'm just going to go back and add our other project. So we don't even need the other solution that we created. But um, so let me do e source. And I'm going to grab tour of heroes, and I'm going to add this project. So now. We've got these two projects. I'm going to add a project reference so that we can actually do unit testing things. So let me just build this quick, make sure everything is happy. OK, so we have both of these building. The first thing we're going to have to do is actually pull in the B unit project that we're going to use to test this. So let's man manage our NuGet packages here. So we want to look for B unit and we want to include the pre-release because this isn't a final release package yet. Um, I'll show you guys what I mean. So if I uncheck this box here, we just get this verify thing. Um, that's not what we're looking for. So if we include pre-release, there's B unit. There's B unit web, which is the actual library that's going to test the web components. But there's also this B unit X unit that allows us to use X unit. So we want, let's grab this one first, install it accept everything and then once that installs we're going to pull in the X unit as well and once that's done the other thing we're going to grab here is mock so this is going to let us mock our interfaces that we work so hard on so I'm just going to install that here again accept all this and now this should be happy again and I'm just going to build nothing should be different except for we have more packages in our list. And we're just gonna take a look here. So at the time of doing this, hopefully it's just as easy for you. 
but you can see here I'm using one beta nine. I'm using XUnit two four one, and I'm using Mach four fourteen. Just in case you guys have any issues, these are the versions I have. So um, I'm just going to leave that up there for a second. You can pause it uh, if you need to make that work. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to grab the test explorer. And I have my test explorer docked over here. And just to prove that I'm not lying, um, since we have the xunit runner.visual studio, that we do have a functioning unit test. It just does nothing now. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is rename this to be the hero test because we have a hero component. And I think I'm wrong. I think that was actually supposed to be the heroes component. So let's rename that and keep that right. So the other thing we need to do here is we're only using X unit right now, but we need to use B unit. And the way you use B unit is you include the, or you inherit off this test context. So I'm going to hit control period to pull in the using for B unit. And now let's just run this again. It should still compile, but we've still got our uh, test one here. So let's give it a different name. First thing we're going to do is we're going to update this test to be practice test. Not very much of a better name, but it's ours. So now that that's renamed, the first thing we're going to do is actually create a new mock. So let's call this, um, I'm just going to call it mock for now. So we want, we want to use mock, so we're going to have to use the using. And if you've never used mock before, the way it works is, so we're going to get a mock object. And the way you get a mock, mock object is by creating a new mock and telling it what interface you want mock to mock. So I'm going to rename this to hero service mock just so it's a little bit easier to understand later. So the next line of code we're going to do here, I'm just going to paste this in. Um, this is, we're going to take the service mock that we created before, and we're going to call a setup function. And basically what that setup function is saying is that take the object we have, and we're going to add the get heroes call here. So anytime get heroes is actually called, we're going to return a new task. So in order to return a new task, we're going to actually need the system threading tasks. So we're building up our usings up here. And then what we're also going to need is we're going to need our hero array. And that comes from our models. So now, so now what you see here, and hopefully this is large enough, I'll make it a little bit larger. Um, so we're building up our mock. We're calling the setup. And what the setup's saying is when we get a new mock object, we're gonna we're gonna set up our get hero service. So when this gets called by our unit test, it's gonna return a new task up with a hero array that's gonna return us a single hero with bacon man and he's got a negative one as an ID. So at this point we've learned how to do a mock, which is great, but we really haven't done anything with our component at all anyway. So if we take a look inside of our components. If we look at this heroes component, you can see we've also got these other services. So not only do we have this hero service that we've taken care of the uh, get heroes call that happens on the initialized async, um, but we have these other two services, um, the, the messaging and the navigation manager. So here we're going to we're going to do the same thing and we're going to mock the messaging service so that that exists. Um, so here we're just going to create a var messaging mock and I'm basically just going to steal the code from before. And we better call the namespace that that comes from, the services namespace. And if we go back to that heroes component, you can see this one's not Matt doing an interface. This is literally injecting the navigation manager class. So we can also mock the class. It's slightly different, but so if we do a var, var navigation mock, you can mock um, 
we're gonna do the navigation manager so you can see here we can also mock not only an interface it's far more useful as an interface but we can also mon uh, mock a concrete implementation so really this is going to do nothing but um, we just need it to be there when our component is created if you look back here um, you can see that it's going to inject one and since we don't have dependency injection set up for unit tests that's what uh, we're going to let we're going to let this test context go ahead and inject all of these so we need to have these available to be used so again if we go back if we go back and look at the razor program you can see here there's this builder services add scoped where there's the scoped ones the scoped i service and this messaging service navigation service is also in there but um, we kind of get that one for free if we come back to our heroes test we're going to add a similar section that the test context is going to do for us. So it has this services, but then we're going to be able to add a singleton service. And the way we do that is by using the Microsoft extensions dependency injection. So this test context is actually giving us access to the services object that we're able to use this dependency injection on. And so then we have the mocks that we're going to use and the way that you pass the actual object in the mock is you call the object property because this has a whole bunch of other functions on there that aren't the real object so to get one of the actual type um, you have to call the object property hopefully you guys are familiar with mock but if you're not um, this is basically everything we need to do to do our um, setup here we have our component under test and we're going to render the component of heroes. So we, we make, we make sure that we call our component and now, so we have a render component, but on our render component, if we go back and look at it real quick, we can see that we're going to have a label of hero name. We're going to have an input. We're going to have this on click, but we're also going to have this on, this list that's going to populate and for each hero in our get heroes we should have one showing and since we're we're mocking our service we should have a hero named bacon man in the service so what we want to see is that we should have a list item that matches this class of badge with a negative one here um, in the span because that's the number that shows up before their name and then we're going to see Bacon Man in there. So let's take a look at the test and run it. And there we go. We have a have a successfully running um, rendering of a Blazor component and being able to match the markup that we created. So now you'd be able to go through and check um, basically doing the same things, making sure maybe button delete is there, um, seeing how that looks. Um, you can check to see that these labels are there. Um, and I think you can also do things with um, maybe updating the input 